Un, deux. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mathias de Dampierre, and I'm, uh, and I'm really pleased to welcome you to this last event of our Aerospace and Defense Week. I'm, uh, so to, to today we are going to talk about uh, how traditional space and new space can build the future of space together. And we're going to do that with uh, four great panelists from uh, Thales Alienia Space from the CNES from a startup called Launcher and uh, from uh, uh, a VC from Quantum Nation specialized in uh, investment in quantum technologies. But just before doing so, I would like to welcome with me on stage uh, Vanis Fabody, a Starbucks co-founder and managing director of our US activities for a quick uh, introduction key keynote about uh, the hot topics in, in space at the moment. Hi everyone. So it's working. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Van, for being with us to, 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 to today. Yeah. As a short intro to this panel, what, uh, from your point of view and from uh, your vision, could be are the hot topics at the moment in the space industry? So that, that's a very general question. Um, for those of you that haven't met me before, uh, I'm Francois and Sanders' counterpart uh, that oversees our North America operation. Um, although uh, I was born just uh, less than a, a mile away from here and that building facing us was my first home as a, as a child. So uh, it, it, I always love coming back here. Um, and I think when Francois and I were brainstorming kind of our U.S. expansion. It was it was very much inspired by what, what industry was experiencing here. It was Talus, Airbus, the investors, the founders, the startups that were really um, uh, participating, getting involved in what was really uh, instigating and provoking that that change of the business uh, economy that was going on in the U.S. So it was a uh, it was very exciting for us to to come set up offices in California which is where I'm living now. Um, and uh, I think um, I did not expect to go into opening up our Starburst office in the US um, and get drowned in the craziness of the Wild West of the space industry that is going on in, in the US. I have a lot of respect and, and uh, of how the coalition and the consortium of industry uh, continues to thrive here in Europe. Uh, but um, I have to say it was overwhelming to, for Starburst to really ramp up. And over the last six years, we've built an incredible relationship, not just with NASA, um, not just with the Air Force and now the Space Force, um, but with so many of the companies that we're seeing continue to raise funding and compete and offer solutions in much more creative ways. And Matthias, to your question specifically, um, what, what we often like to tell people, so. In addition to Starburst co-founder, I, I wear another hat. I, I'm also uh, on an advisory board to um, Space Systems Command. Uh, so the military in particular is taking a much stronger role for dual use applications that, and they lean a lot more on established industry as well as the emerging entrepreneurs and companies that are developing the products in more creative ways with more solutions. So we've seen of the hundreds to thousands of companies that we've um, identified uh, of the 11 SPACs that are happening uh, just in, that were announced in the last six to eight months. For those of you that don't know, um, it's this uh, out, it's an old um, uh, process for a shell entity acquiring a private company and it's become a very um, aggressive and popularized way for 
investors to capitalize and and on future tech businesses. So the space industry in particular has become one of the hottest sectors uh, in in the U.S. and um, and government is not ignoring that. So um, at Starburst, I know we do a lot of work with the defense agencies here, with Kness here, with industry, and it's no different in the U.S. Um, the amount of companies is much uh, more overwhelming, and I think it is our duty to make sure that we are helping every one of these companies um, find those applications to work with the existing champions. So whether it's Northrop Grumman and a startup for Space Force mission, um, we're, we're recording more and more of these incredible use cases. And so um, part of my role with Space Systems Command is also um, lowering those kind of sovereign barriers. And so uh, we, uh, I specifically support the Office of International Affairs and how we want to continue to um, in, invite allied partners and their domestic industries to continue to support the greater mission. And that is very much becoming uh, threatened in, in terms of national security in space. And, and I think commercial companies in particular are doing an incredible job of helping um, sensors and, and communications um, thrive in space. And as we see that sort of business case moving away from exquisite technology uh, to a sort of a, a devolved, fragmented mission for um, hundreds to thousands of satellites. I was having dinner uh, just a couple weeks ago in San Francisco uh, and sitting outside and the stars were bright and it was a pure coincidence that the Starlink constellation just flew overhead and we were just like, uh, that was just by accident. We didn't plan for it. And I know there's now websites where people can do this, but I think um, it really is an exciting time to be in the industry. And I hope that's a safe introduction. Yeah. Thank you very much, Van, for this uh, insightful introduction. Uh, so now we will now leave the floor to our uh, panel. So I will ask uh, the four of you, thank you, to, to come over. And thank you, Van. Thank you. You can keep it with you. Oh, thank you very much, all of you, for being here t t today. Um, so today we are going to discuss how traditional space and new space can build the future to together. It's quite a wide topic, but it will it should enable us to uh, investigate several top topics here. Let me start with the first round of uh, introduction. Uh, ladies first. Uh, so I will start with you kelly uh, you are in charge of financial planning and analysis for uh, for launcher uh, at launcher prior to that you uh, you worked as a head of business intelligence i have at livestream in new york and uh, at the camera company called mevo uh, until it was acquired by logitech in 2021 and you studied engineering and finance in uh, in proposals at ulb is that right Perfect. Thank you very much. Then on your left, you have uh, Clarence. Clarence to, to Uh Clarence, you have nearly 20 years of experience, mostly at Jim Malto at first, um, where you held various positions in finance and, and many fun, fun, fun functions. And uh, you joined Stalis Alenia Space two years ago as a vice president in charge of uh, strategy and innovation. Thank you very much. Then on your left, you have uh, François Alter. Uh, François, uh, you are graduated from École Normale Supérieure and uh, École des Mines. Uh, you had various positions in various French ministries before joining uh, the CNES uh, four years ago, almost. And you are now uh, the advisor of the chairman and CEO of uh, the CNES. And then on your left, uh, Charles Big Bede, uh, you are the partner and, and founder of Quantum Nation, a VC fund uh, specialized in uh, quantum technologies. You are uh, a successful entrepreneur uh, in, in France. You've created uh, many companies, and I think it would be a little bit too long to list them now. But uh, thank you very much for being here today. Um, Maybe my first question is for you, Clarence. 
uh, when we're pre preparing that panel, uh, you were mentioning to me that uh, uh, you don't necessarily uh, oppose a tra traditional space and new space. Uh, can you maybe el elaborate a little bit more on that? Is it better? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, so indeed, uh, new space is a revolution uh, for sure in the in the space economy. Uh, but I would not uh, I would not oppose the traditional uh, traditional space and new uh, uh, legacy players and new uh, newcomers. Uh, actually, uh, there has been a, a kind of consensus, and I think we need to combine uh, both uh, the strengths uh, of uh, what you call traditional uh, space and the agility uh, and uh, of this. Uh, a new space uh, spirit and when i came to uh, arrive to uh, to TAS, to teles and space uh, i discovered indeed that uh, that we are able to uh, to manage that in a legacy uh, players uh, kind of uh, company uh, i think uh, we are able to uh, to leverage the strengths uh, of end-to-end -end system uh, integrator for example uh, uh, having the legitimacy to win a large constellation uh, like uh, well, obviously the, the telesatellite speed, but uh, for, for sure what can uh, uh, we see that we are able to uh, support uh, as well uh, partners or small uh, smaller companies, uh, startups, and that has been the case for uh, Black Sky, our uh, space flight industry, uh, that has been uh, supported. Uh, we have been investing in this company and uh, enable them to uh, uh, supporting them to uh, to extend their uh, their constellation, uh, and that this is one of the specs that was mentioned by Ivan, <laughs> actually. So that's uh, or, or uh, startup. Yes. So I think combining uh, a win-win. I'm turning to the CNES now. Uh, what kind of complementarity do you see between uh, legacy players and newcomers in the space industry? Uh, in fact, just I want to emphasize that uh, we are seeing a, a very strong wave of uh, space entrepreneur in, in France and uh, in Europe. Uh, I think it's, it's quite it's quite new compared to the long story of, uh, of space. Uh, when I arrived at NES four years ago, there was only one startup created every year uh, in the space area, and now we're supporting the creation of 50 new startups per year. So it's, it's something, uh, I mean. So it's a good question to, to understand what's the difference between legacy players and uh, that newcomers, uh, because we have a lot of newcomers now. Um, so. In fact, uh, as Clarence uh, told, there, there are di there are certain certain uh, things uh, characteristics which are quite different. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, legacy players are uh, usually uh, financially sound. Uh, they they have also customers all around the world. Uh, they 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 have also all capabilities and expertise in Europe. Uh, it's true, and we have perhaps the best in the world. But uh, but newcomers, uh, we know, we know that uh, they are weaker, but they, they have something. Uh, quite different. They, they can uh, take more risk, and uh, they are they are more agile. Uh, they, they can take shortcuts, and uh, they can do it because uh, they don't have a financial analyst uh, to see if uh, if uh, something is is going wrong. Uh, there, there's no there, the stock market will not uh, <laughs> be <laughs> very sad about it. And also uh, also uh, what is uh, uh, what is different different also is uh, that uh, they, they don't have the, the same process, they don't have the strict corporate process, they are much cheaper and much quicker. So it's something um, we know, uh, everybody knows, so uh, it's important in fact for both to collaborate 
and uh, what we see, uh, what uh, and uh, what we will see, in fact, uh, in the future is uh, certainly uh, what we are seeing uh, now in uh, other sectors. And uh, in fact, uh, space is, is quite late uh, comparing to other sectors, such as, uh, uh, for instance, uh, biotech. Uh, if we are just uh, thinking about what happened uh, this year with COVID, uh, the COVID vaccines are all coming uh, where all developed by startups and uh, universities uh, and after for most of them uh, marketed by uh, and uh, the, and produced uh, by big pharma so we see exactly what will happen because we can see that in other sectors okay thank you um now turning to, to you uh, uh, charles uh, the the VC fund you created is specialized in quantum technologies which will have uh, many applications but uh, but especially in space, for instance, quantum crypt cryptography will will be very key for the future U European secure constellation. Uh, so my question is very simple: from your investor point of view, why invest in in space today? Well, first, uh, so uh, I'm an alternative investment fund manager, so uh, we have a diversified portfolio of. Uh, funds some uh, very boring but quite real economy and old economy uh, and some uh, in deep tech it's true uh, so uh, quantum nation uh, has been founded uh, three years ago it, it's, uh, it's it's one of the first uh, quantum technologies uh, dedicated uh, venture capital fund well that doesn't mean we are the largest investors in quantum technologies <laughs> because some uh, very big guys uh, in uh, in uh, which are uh, generalist uh, venture funds in the us are investing uh, hundreds of millions in in that sector but they are not uh, a vertically uh, thematic uh, fund dedicated to, to to quantum we are so that's great it's good for the deal flow uh, we met, I think, 350 uh, start quantum startups uh, around the world, and we invested in uh, 15 uh, of them, one five, and uh, we already had one exit. And it's uh, it's hot, it's hot, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, so uh, yeah, as you said, Matthias, there are applications in the, of course, in the in the space uh, area. Uh, as uh, as you said, um, uh, quantum uh, key distribution uh, is a way to secure an exchange of information from a point A to a point B, and it, and it goes through space uh, to 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 make it work uh, uh, more efficiently. So, uh, and the, by the way, the Chinese were the first to to use that uh, capacity, but uh, yeah, fortunately, Europe is catching uh, catching up. Um, and we have uh, a lot of projects. So we have invested in, uh, I think, three firms uh, amongst the portfolio uh, that are uh, focusing on uh, on QKD, and uh, also a firm in developing uh, quantum repeaters, which will be quite uh, useful uh, also to for the future quantum networks. Of course, this is not for the day-to-day -day use. It's uh, really to secure exchange of information between governments between. Uh, embassies uh, for the for our armies uh, so it's not for uh, for you know b2c <laughs> applications but uh, that is something uh, very important uh, because uh, you can secure uh, using a, a fundamental law of nature uh, any exchange of information as soon as there is a well, a kind of a spy on the on the line. You you know it immediately it destroys the the entanglement of the photons. So uh, so you you well, you'd start another session, basically. <laughs> so it's quite efficient. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. Now I'm turning to, to you, Kelly. Um, what, what do, what do you see? I mean, how do you see space agencies and historical organization and startups evolved together? What, what's the view of a startup like a launcher? uh regarding that topic and may maybe a first question to that is what is the, the current status of a uh, launcher sure. um so launcher is a startup basically company from 2017 by um, basically developed Marche. 
better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So um, I was saying we are a US-based company founded in 2017, um, initially in New York, but um, recently in March, we moved our headquarter. Me. We, good. We moved our headquarter to um, Los Angeles, California, and we actually also opened our production facility there, which is a very strategic location for us in terms of being close to uh, great talents for recruitment, uh, supply chain, um, and customers, and, and also funding. Um, so we've raised, uh, we've also in the past month raised $11.7 million in a Series A um, round of um, fundraising. And that's going to uh, basically that will fund the growth acceleration that we're going to have opening the factory, also um, increasing our team. Um, we've also announced that we are working on uh, orbital transfer vehicle to which is going to be compatible with our own small rocket called Launcher Light, but also with SpaceX Falcon 9. Uh, and we have a first mission um, scheduled in October of next year on Falcon 9. So. Um, Basically, at launch, our objective is to reach orbit with our uh, launch light rocket, and our objective is to do that with a total budget of fifty million dollars, which is um, a fraction of what our other company spent. Um, when we know that uh, SpaceX spent around two hundred million to reach orbit, Rocket Lab around a hundred million, um, we have a strong objective to be able to reach orbit with a fifty million investment. So. Um, that's why we are working on this project, and we will um, also have a new round of financing um, early next year. So that's for our status. Uh, I think, though, you had a question about big institutions and how we work. Yes. Yeah. So I think I, I agree with, with um, the other panelists on this set. Basically, us as a startup, we evolve together with big institutions and space agencies. Um, of course, we our startups all we are lean, we are very capital, capital efficient. Um, again, you know, to be able to support our objective to, to go to orbit with um, $50 million investment. Um, but we evolved together and we, we work closely with NASA um, at NASA uh, Stennis Space Center in Mississippi for testing. And we were also supported by um, the US Air Force Department through a small business innovation research award. So we are very connected. And also, I think in the future, we, we would want to grow this relationship with institutions in terms of having uh, European partners and, and governments become customers through a franchising model. So basically, that would mean that we develop the racket, we manufacture it, and we work on the approval with the US department. But then we have a partner that can actually uh, do the sale, um, do the integration, of the payload and launch from the launch pad or one of their partners launch pad. So these are the kind of relationship that we look forward to um, have in the future. So I think it's a good transition for a question for you, Francois. Uh, what role do you see for uh, space agencies like NES uh, to foster the collaboration between the big players and the startups? Yes. Uh, the first thing is uh, that uh, uh, a space agency is usually a legacy player, so the first thing is to start a co collaborations with uh, startups. <laughs> so no, the, it's not a joke. I, I mean, it, it's quite hard, in fact, for a legacy player first to to work with the startups because uh, usually uh, we work on the very long term, uh, difficult projects, uh, sometimes 100 millions more or more. Uh, um, uh, projects, uh, so it's, it's usually big projects. So you you don't want uh, to have uh, your projects uh, uh, going into the sea because of uh, because of a startup uh, you you choose uh, which uh, has not delivered the, the right project. So uh, you you need you need uh, to to be able uh, to find good projects and to find how to support quickly because uh, startups don't have the time in fact uh, to the decision time in uh, legacy players usually are uh, measured in uh, months and or years uh, so but for startups you you, you can't just uh, take this uh, 
take uh, months to decide, but uh, you, you need to take weeks. So it's very important to change your process. So it's what we, we started to do uh, a few years ago because uh, there were some startups now. Uh, and uh, we were supporting uh, them uh, now through, uh, through uh, co-development of technology. We are supporting uh, them through, the, we, we are buying uh, services and uh, and uh, projects from startups or so. And uh, we are now also investing in startups. And I think it's uh, quite different from the uh, US, for instance. Uh, I know that NASA is not doing that. So we, are, we have the full process now to work with, uh, with, uh, with startups. And we want in the next coming years to, to grow that uh, with the maturity of uh, the company uh, we are working with. Okay, and we will have the opportunity to come back to that point. Um, turning to you now, uh, Clarence, uh, in the light of what has, ha has ju just been, been said, can you describe maybe one or two examples uh, where um, Thales Alien Space partnered with um, startups with a product or solutions up to the market? I mean, uh, it's a difficult that's one, a, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, difficult because. Uh, but 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 uh, to answer uh, maybe one comment from uh, from François, I think uh, what is important to be able to uh, to to work with uh, startups or uh, or new uh, uh, small uh, enterprise, etc. It's it's important to have an ambidextrous uh, organization. So not only the traditional one with hierarchical uh, hierarchical uh, organization that enables to secure indeed. The, the expertise or the experience that, uh, that we have accumulated over years, but but as well to have those kind of connected inter interconnection uh, organization uh, that enables to, to to be more agile and to be uh, uh, let's say uh, closer to uh, to the to the way the startups are, are working. Uh, I think in TAS, uh, in tele sorry, I'm saying that, uh, in Telesalenia space, uh, they have been. Uh, they have implemented this uh, this way of working uh, at least uh, in the innovation posture uh, that they have developed uh, that has been rewarded by the, the club of director the director of innovation uh, in france uh, in 2019 and and i think this is really a, a, a cornerstone of the, the right uh, collaboration uh, between uh, uh, our big players uh, like uh, like we are and the, the startups uh, uh, the startups that we that we meet uh, regularly for for your information for example in the we have what we call an open innovation uh, um, open innovation uh, which is uh, thanks to the agency thanks to uh, uh, some uh, players that are scouting uh, those uh, startups uh, we are in contact with uh, more or less 700 uh, startups and smes uh, we are working actively with 150 uh, of those uh, and we have uh, some uh, some good examples of uh, of startups like uh, Exotrails, or uh, uh, more recently I was in uh, in Zurich uh, two days ago uh, uh, with Swiss 212, for example, uh, with whom we have been able to uh, to have a, a real uh, cross fertilizing uh, relationship, uh, enabling us to uh, to get those uh, technologies uh, on board uh, our satellites. Uh, so that's uh, I think the kind of uh, good examples of uh, of startups and relationship uh, between. Uh, between uh, Telesania Space or, or, or big players and, uh, and, uh, and, this, uh, and this world. And this is a, a more traditional uh, 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 one way uh, to do it. And, uh, and the other way is as, is as well to invest in those, uh, in those startups. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, I think, uh, uh, in partnership with some VCs or some, uh, some other investors uh, to be able to provide this, uh, uh, this, this expertise and the confidence uh, that we yeah, that, that we could uh, provide as a big, uh, big group. Thank you. And I will uh, continue with you. Uh, more generally, uh, what are the technology domains um, or the applications for which a collaboration with the open innovation ecosystem um, makes more sense? I mean, is there any specific type of domain where, where Thales space, for instance, is less equipped or? Yeah. So usually to make uh, to make this transformation happen, uh, it's uh, it's helpful to have uh, to have this collaboration in disruptive technologies. Uh, so today we are we are seeing some new technologies in quantum, indeed. So that's uh, that's one of the areas. Uh, we have uh, artificial intelligence or 5G uh, as well on uh, on lean constellations. So on, uh, that's uh, that's a way to uh, to abord it. But let's say that uh, within Telesania space we 
we, we don't have like uh, one or two uh, areas or verticals. We, we are more in a pragmatic approach. So, so having a, a process to scout uh, numbers of uh, number of opportunities and to review with the business lines uh, indeed and, uh, and with the, uh, who we call the innovation point of contact uh, within the organization. So, 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 so people with, uh, with the proper mindset that are uh, fostering the innovation in the company uh, to, 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 to validate a little bit, uh, I would say, the, the, the appropriate startup with whom uh, we would like to, to work with. Very clear. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, maybe yes, there is a technology part, <laughs> uh, and I would say that there is as well, uh, uh, apart from the technology, uh, in Europe, we are uh, promoting a lot the work with uh, uh, small and medium uh, uh, enterprise. Uh, so this is a way as well, uh, I think not only, uh, uh, this, this is a way to, uh, to have not only on techno domains, but as well on geographies uh, to identify new, uh, new startups or in Europe, for instance, for example, when we have to answer bids, etc. Uh, to be able to uh, to accompany uh, those uh, those small companies. So that's very clear. Yes. Thank you. Um, turning to you now, uh, Charles. Again, um, we 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 saw that, for instance, co corporate also invest in quantum technologies. And I think that Thales is a really good example of that. Uh, but investing in deep physics requires time before any return on investment. Um, how do you see uh, these corporate investments be complementary to a VC approach? Or oh, by many, many means. First, I would like to say that Thales has taken a ticket in uh, our fund, by the way. Thank you again. <laughs> um, and um, so there is a complementary uh, approach clearly uh, uh, for to develop uh, well, uh, in, in deep tech, in deep physics. Uh, so uh, innovations uh, in the laboratories at a certain mo moment of time, uh, the science has been done. It's time for uh, industrial applications, uh, for uh, getting ready for the, the, the market. And uh, so a, a, a startup can be created uh, usually. Uh, that's the, the most efficient way probably, although at some of course some, some sometimes uh, innovations happen in big groups uh, obviously but uh, it's true that it's a quite efficient way to to promote innovation so but the but the startup can is not alone and cannot uh, you know cannot uh, fly uh, just on its own so it, it needs cooperation uh, with uh, big uh, corporates industrials it needs venture funds, <laughs> needs the agencies, needs the, the public institutions to, to get the credibility and some also leverage on, on the equity uh, that will be brought by, by the business angels at the beginning and then the, the venture capital funds. So it's, a, it's an ecosystem. Uh, and now uh, we, we begin to understand how it works. Uh, it, uh, the, the states, uh, Israel, uh, show, show, show the road. Uh, and uh, in Europe now, we begin to understand and to, to make that in practice, and it, it's uh, accelerating fast. We have a lot uh, of uh, intelligence in our uh, the, uh, science center uh, everywhere in Europe, in, uh, so in, in quantum technologies notably, but in new space also, so uh, in, uh, in artificial intelligence in many uh, very hot sectors. So, so I'm very confident that Europe can can catch up, uh, catch back the uh, the other continents. It's important, uh, as President Macron also said uh, recently. Uh, we we should target uh, having a very big uh, uh, decacorns in Europe. It's possible. Um, and now I'm uh, asking myself, what was your question? <laughs> I, I was asking you about how a corporate investment and VC investment yeah, also, can be so complementary work. for this deep physics. It's uh, a day-to-day -day work. It's a, it's a, it's a dialogue. It's a, it's a, it's a continuous uh, exchange. Uh, uh, we uh, we we introduce uh, industrials that we know well to the startups. We uh, so so that they can uh, um, have demonstrators uh, thanks to the, the, these big groups, and uh, we finance that. Then the public institution with, uh, can can add some uh, capital and and we bring our experience. Uh, personally, I bring the 
the, the almost all mistakes that I've done in, in my <laughs> entrepreneur uh, past uh, to the to the entrepreneurs that I uh, I invest in, uh, so that they so that they don't do these mistakes, <laughs> that they progress uh, and introduce them to customers, uh, um, bring them to the market, uh, help them in the capital raising exercises uh, later on. It's uh, it's uh, you know it's uh, it's incredibly uh, active uh, work for a, a venture capital uh, dedicated to a sector, and um, and I take the opportunity because unfortunately I, I will have to leave uh, soon uh, due to a very uh, very long uh, time appointment I, I have to leave uh, soon, and um, uh, that uh, so we are uh, an alternative investment uh, um, manager, uh, as I said. We have uh, this. Uh, we have launched this uh, initiative in quantum technologies. Uh, it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it's, it's becoming a success. It's great, uh, and uh, we are thinking uh, about new space. So I, I took the take the opportunity to to say it here because it's. Uh, it's a round table dedicated to the subject, so I think it's, a, it's the right uh, place. Uh, so at the moment, I'm not announcing a, a launch of a fund, but uh, we have we are working uh, within Audacia, which is the the, the fund manager of the contonation. Uh, so on the side uh, to, uh, to 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 prepare uh, maybe uh, the first steps for launching a, a, a fund dedicated to new space. I think it has to be maybe uh, not only uh, not uh, Franco-French initiative, it has to be uh, more pan-European. So we're working with uh, uh, some friends uh, from Germany uh, and uh, then uh, and uh, hope to launch that uh, next year uh, and to be able to and to 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 be more efficient. We, we will take uh, already invest in some uh, startups uh, this year. And uh, like we did with the with the contonation fund, uh, because it takes so many time to uh, to structure a fund and to go uh, up to the first closing, that you have to do uh, things in parallel. And so you you it's possible to create a, a company, uh, an SAS. You uh, capitalize it a little, a little bit. You take some uh, stakes in uh, in uh, startups in new space, for instance. And then when the the fund is ready. Uh, sufficient, uh, large enough. Then you, you at the first closing, you you bring, you contribute the assets which are in the company to the fund at cost, and the company becomes an LP of the fund. So in a way, you create the the feeder of the fund before the fund exists. So, <laughs> so we have a, a name. Uh, it's a geodesic, geodesic. Uh, and uh, so we are working on that. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to, well, to tell you that. <laughs> it is more an honor for us to have the prime, uh, the prime oh, memory the of the, the this you. announcement. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I understand that you have to, to leave. So uh, yeah, I'm very sorry. thanks a lot for your time. Thank and, you very much. Uh, I hope that we will hear uh, quickly about this new fund. <laughs> um, turning to you now again, K K Kelly, as a uh, as uh, Charles just said, uh, the, I mean, the new space se se sector con continues to attract a lot of VCs, uh, especially, especially in the US. We've seen the recent announcement of relativity space with the $650 million. I think it was a Series F or, or G now, anymore. I don't, don't know anymore, but uh, uh, smaller than that, they still face four with the $21 million play as well with the 60 i guess uh so the momentum is there and my question for you is um as a you know as a representative of, of a u.s startup but being based in europe what's your view uh with respect to this uh, uh, to this europe this is u.s uh bc fund, fund, funding mm -hmm. sure but i think space is no different than any other industry um u.s has always been really strong and always the biggest in terms of funding companies um but there's also the culture that is really strong in the us in terms of success and then also the ecosystem i think these three points work together so um for me in my example working for a us company i can only acknowledge how strong the ecosystem is around us in terms of talent and suppliers again the customers um 
and the US has been really um, attractive in terms of like not just funding but building that ecosystem and I think that it took decades of initiatives and investment to reach that point. Um, now, um, for your sort of the, the questions on, um, so sorry. Um, the question is more about mm -hmm. how, how you see the way things are going in Europe compared to yes. the US. Do, think, you, do you have any, uh, I mean, any view on that? I, 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 I work with the US, so um, I don't have too much of the knowledge of what's going on in Europe, but I can hear all of these great initiatives. Um, but I think the US is really strong at attracting. I mean, Elon Musk is in, originally from the US. Max, Au, our founder, is European, born and raised, uh, now an American citizen, but uh, still. And then there's also the story with Peter Beck, uh, founder of Rocket Lab. He's a New Zealand entrepreneur, and uh, he created New Zealand technology, uh, New Zealand Rocket, and Rocket Lab today is a US-based company. Um, so it's not the only reason, but at some point in their in their story, they moved all their technology to the US for a 50 million investment from the U from US funds. And so the question is really like any country in the world uh, would want to have their access to space as a sovereign access. And somehow New Zealand, now when they launch a rocket from New Zealand, built in New Zealand, made by New Zealand, on a launch pad in New Zealand, they have to get approval from the US department. So hmm. it's um, how Europe uh, can build that ecosystem because any country can invest 50 to 100 million to get sovereign access to space. But I think the US has been really strong at having that ecosystem around it. So it's just not just the funding, also the culture and um, the ecosystem. Thank you for this point of view. Um, um, go, go, going back to, to, to you, uh, Francois, we understand that Cosmic Capital, the venture arm of CNES, is about to go live anytime soon. Um, can you tell me, uh, tell us, not only me, sorry about that, uh, a little bit more about what will be the investment thesis, what would be yeah, the goal? Yes, just uh, just one thing. In fact, uh, Cosmic Capital, uh, yes, uh, will go live uh, in a few, I would say, a few weeks, a few months, but uh, very very soon. Uh, and uh, but it's not the CNES fund; it's a private uh, oh, managed uh, VC fund where CNES is a cornerstone investor. Uh, in fact, the story is that. Uh, we we want with that uh, to stimulate uh, the financial ecosystem as you you, you told us uh, we need to have some funding some way to have a a, a good uh, good ecosystem for startups to uh, to grow uh, and uh, to be attractive so we we launched uh, this initiative and uh, we we want with that to st stimulate uh, the, the 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 growing ecosystem of uh, startups in France and in Europe. In fact, because it's a European uh, VC fund, uh, which will uh, invest in uh, early stage startups uh, because it's the maturity we are seeing uh, now for the moment. The majority of the um, of the of the startups are at this stage for the moment, and uh, so. Uh, uh, we the, the fund will be active and more specifically uh, will have a, a good focus on the downstream sectors because there's a lot of opportunities uh, especially in Europe where we have a lot of infrastructures uh, we have a lot of data and not uh, and uh, these data are non, I would say uh, used uh, uh, more or less, uh, more by uh, by uh, U.S. Uh, GAFAs, for instance, uh, than uh, from European companies. So uh, it's a bit troublesome for our economy. Okay, th thank you. Um, now, turning, back, I mean, it's more general qu question that uh, I wanted to start first with Charles, but uh, he's left now. But I would like to uh, have that question of uh, the SPAC. Just one, uh, yeah, just sorry. one thing also because uh, Charles is uh, out, but. Uh, uh, we also have an idea to the, the idea with Cosmic 
in capital is to stimulate the ecosystem. So I'm very happy that if if there are other space funds in France and Europe, uh, we need uh, we need space funds de definitely, and we need to have a generalist uh, tech fund uh, interested in space. So that's uh, something very important, and we will support uh, all that ecosystem. And, and that's important for us, by the way, because uh, uh, that enables uh, us uh, to identify, with your help or with the help of, uh, of those VC funds, uh, to identify the good startups uh, for which uh, with whom we can partner. So, so that's true that uh, in this ecosystem, uh, that's uh, that's a good momentum that uh, that we are seeing. And uh, maybe we will have uh, the opportunity to discuss uh, afterwards. But uh, yeah. in Europe, uh, I think they, there is this momentum as well uh, popping up. Uh, last year, we organized with the uh, European uh, Innovation Council, the EIC, uh, a one-day uh, event uh, within uh, with Thales and Thales Alenia Space about uh, showing up uh, certain startups all around uh, Europe, uh, indeed, to be able to uh, to catch up and partner with uh, with those ones. And I think the spirit uh, the spirit is there. We are continuing with uh, other uh, European institutions to uh, to organize those kind of events, and, uh, and I think we will. Uh, we will have the opportunity to have one more this year, so so we will see. Uh, we'll communicate on that, but uh, yes, yeah. yeah. The momentum is there, and I think that there is another momentum around around SPAC, as Dan said, as an intro. Uh, there uh, there has been more than twenty of them in the space and defense sector since since the big beginning of the year um maybe the question is for you kelly uh how how do you see that investment vehicle as uh, as necessary or not or what's your view on on this back trend um well it's it's a, lot. It's a very in <laughs> interesting time to be in the space industry that's for sure um i think these i mean some of the valuations are extremely high but in our opinion they sort of make sense in a way that um, so SpaceX valuation is 72 billion dollars and that could very much increase a lot with an IPO or success from Starlink and so with the other companies valuations and SPACs it's it's really about who can be the, no the next SpaceX and so in that context valuation of one two four billion dollars they're not I mean, they, they do make a little bit of sense. Uh, um, I think it maybe would be more logical to have a little bit more of a gap between the companies like Rocket Lab, who have successfully launched 20 rockets in orbit, and other companies who have great development and great team, but haven't yet uh, reached orbit. So that's, but it's all, it's all good. It's okay. gr great time. <laughs> do, do you want to add? Do you, do you want to add anything on that or? Yes, but uh, in, in fact, uh, there's a lot of liquidity in the market. So SPACs uh, are a great way, in fact, for investor to to, uh, to invest uh, is that liquidity in some kind of regulated market, uh, which can be done with uh, just private equity, uh, classical private equity. So uh, we understand that, and uh, it's something uh, I think uh, which certainly will be also uh, looked uh, in some in some way in Europe. Uh, you see, in France, for instance, uh, BPI France has launched uh, uh, some fund open to the public uh, to invest in uh, in uh, some kind of uh, private equity uh, uh, SMEs or uh, or uh, mid caps. Uh, so it's something which is uh, very serious, in fact, uh, especially especially in Europe where you you don't have a, a lot of pension funds, etc. So, so it's something we need to investigate, and uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that uh, it's something which will appear in Europe, uh, especially for space sector in the coming years. Yeah, and I think it's a good transition to my next question. You were mentioning Europe, and we and we see at European level more and more initiatives there's the cassini initiatives there's the the U european innovation council there's this new um, uh, european um, secure 
communication initiative. Uh, do you believe, and I think the question is for the three of you, that Europe has shifted the right gear now, that has really stepped up to the cause, <laughs> kind of? Francois first. In fact, we, we have a really incredible uh, commissioner with uh, Thierry Botton. Uh, about that is, uh, I think he's truly convinced about uh, space sector and startups. And it's definitely clear. We we, we saw him a lot, few times uh, the last few weeks. So uh, so I can uh, just as assure that. Uh, at the political level, I think there's a big willingness now. Uh, what we need to we 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 need to to find uh, the the way. With an administrative way, because uh, Brussels can some big machine. In fact, because you are just voting one budget every seven years, so you can imagine that uh, everything is uh, quite uh, be quite long. So uh, at the ESA side, also it's the same. I think it's the same way of thinking with uh, uh, Mr. Joseph Ashbara. Uh, but it's the same. He has a. He has a new budget every three years, so uh, you see uh, things. Uh, th there can be massive things from the European side, but uh, we need to go quickly with uh, at the local level, and uh, also with the help. I think uh, with the help of uh, corporate also, who, who must be uh, some customers of uh, startups. I think it's uh, it's the best way, in fact, to handle the 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 way to. To stimulate and to make the the startup grow. Yeah, and I think it's linked to one of my last questions for you, uh, uh, Clarence. Uh, as a co corporate, where where do you see your role uh, uh, in terms of financing that open innovation ecosystem? And I think my underlying question is: it requires some cap cap KPI that are not always matching the short to medium horizon you know so how do you cope with that i know it's not an easy question but uh, uh yes there are, for us there are different ways of uh, of looking at this uh, we are we are investing uh, so we we use three types of levers uh, to uh, to invest or to support this open innovation uh, ecosystem uh, the first one so the most obvious one is indeed to, to, to invest in those uh, startups, uh, I think this provides confidence uh, as well to, to grab uh, additional fundings and this uh, enables uh, those startups to get uh, access uh, to get access to our uh, strong support and, uh, and go to market. Uh, so this is one uh, obvious example that we have applied, for example, by Sky, but as well Northstar or for some, uh, some other uh, startups that we have uh, been investing in. Uh, I think the second, uh, the second other one is uh, partnership uh, more easily. Uh, so we have uh, uh, joint work together, uh, and so uh, so Kineis or uh, Emaria was a, a kind of good examples where we where we joined forces uh, to uh, to be able to develop uh, a system, new uh, a new ecosystem, uh, and we have obviously in terms of investment for uh, for the companies so mentioned the. the, the, the uh, what we are uh, helping them uh, investing in those uh, in those proof of concepts and uh, and make contracts. I think this is this is important. We are doing it, for example, for uh, Inbolt, uh, which is a, uh, a small startup that is uh, that is uh, uh, helping us to uh, to improve our uh, our assembly uh, assembly of satellites. Uh, so, so we are providing. So we have uh, we are active with quite a number of uh, of startups, uh, and uh, and I think this is uh, the best way to uh, to help them as well uh, to by providing them the opportunity to uh, to to prove their uh, their concept uh, within our facilities or within uh, within our uh, even with Fab Labs. Uh, one thing. Labs uh, in almost all our sites, uh, main sites, and uh, and we can share uh, we can share those approach uh, or facilities with with the startups and have access to uh, to this uh, to this 3D uh, to get access to that. I think we have time to take one or two questions from the audience if there's any. 
Uh, otherwise, I mean, if there's any, otherwise I will ask maybe the three of you, if you have one closing remark or one uh, final message, uh, it's not mandatory. It's, uh, it's only the last opportunity for you. <laughs> um, question, yes, Van. No, no, I will uh, repeat the question. Yeah, so the question from the audience was a question from Vance uh, saying that uh, he knows that NASA is thinking of, of launching a venture arm. And so he wanted to know more about the details of a Cosmic just, just, uh, just one thing. In, in, in fact, uh, CNES uh, has a venture arm from a long time ago because uh, we are just uh, talking about when we think about uh, the, 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 the space, uh, the space economy uh, sector, the private space, commercial space. In fact, I would say that it was in, invented in Europe. In fact, first because uh, in US it was more devoted to to uh, institutional uh, to uh, institutional market in Europe we in fact we push very hard uh, on the commercial side so and it was CNES uh, which started uh, with the creation of Iron Space with the creation of Spot Image uh, with the creation of CLS with the creation of Novespace so we have we have a few subsidiaries and we and uh, uh, the, the new one is uh, Kineis. Uh, it's a spin off of CLS, which was uh, our uh, subsidiary. And uh, we, we invested in, inside this constellation. So, in fact, we have a long story of investment, the creation of spin offs, investments in companies at CNES. We, uh, we have a venture arm from a long time. Now, uh, the thing is that uh, it was direct investments. Now we wanted to stimulate uh, the, grow, uh, the growing ecosystem of startups uh, with with uh, not with a direct investments but with indirect investments because we know that uh, to I would say to support better the startups you need to to have a professional uh, VC uh, first to select uh, startups but also to to be at their board etc because we we know that it's a very difficult uh, way of uh, earning participation in fact we tried uh, ourselves to, to invest directly in startups so we have a few startups where the CNES is, uh, is a direct investor and uh, it's quite hard in fact to to uh, to earn money <laughs> to be honest uh, so uh, so uh, we 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 were thinking that it was better to invest uh, inside a fund managed by professionals and uh, and to help them uh, to cre to create a, a vehicle and uh, we are uh, supporting the team uh, with our expertise and we are also uh, supporting the startups where the vc uh, where, where the fund is uh, investing with uh, some i would say extra time from uh, engineers, from CNES engineers, so the, uh, with our IP, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's a way we were thinking about uh, investments. But uh, now, perhaps in the future, we'll also invest directly in other bigger projects, such as uh, the one we, we have done with Kines, for instance. So we, we, we are thinking about a broad view of investments at CNES, and it's a long story. It's not just uh, something we created uh, this year. And uh, also, I didn't mention, but uh, we also started um, an acceleration program uh, called uh, Space Funders. With uh, it's a Franco-German uh, uh, accelerator program, and at the at the end of the program, the best startups will receive, in fact, an investments from uh, from CNES too. Thank you for this uh, additional information regarding cosmic cap capital. Uh, we still have three minutes left, uh, so if there's any additional question, we can take them. Uh, 
otherwise i will uh, uh thank you very much uh my three panelists on stage um thank you for your participation um i think that this con conclude our um, our space in defense week with uh, our five events uh we uh, we had the three roundtables around defense topics, uh, sustainable aviation, and now space to today. We announced yesterday morning uh, the first cohort of our BLAST program. Uh, so we are really proud of that, uh, uh, anchoring uh, Starburst in the French ecosystem as well. And uh, obviously, we had our selection committee yesterday afternoon as well. So uh, thanks all of you for your attention, for your support all the way through. And I uh, and I can announce the next events is going to be rentable in Israel uh, in the next, in the coming days or week. Uh, it's going to be pushed to July, but still uh, it's going to be on quantum uh, technologies. And our next selection committee in the US, I guess. Uh, July 14th. So you will not have a lot of French uh, French audience, but uh... <laughs> okay. And so we will hand over the mic now. Uh, just for those who are online, we will just uh, have a quick uh, status on our, one of, of our startups, Orbital Psychic. So there, there's there's going to be a little mo movie on it uh, for those who are online. Th thank you all of you and bye bye. Founded in 2016, OSK provides monitoring solutions using space-based hyperspectral sensors. While many companies in this field simply sell pixels, Orbital Psychic takes a much more vertical approach to the market, generating data from its space platforms, processing it, and offering an end solution to the users of its web-based platform. Orbital Sidekick provides a space-based hyperspectral monitoring solution, which is keyed for the airports. What we can provide is plume detection, camouflage differentiation, target detection, space-based situational awareness, and a multitude of other services that can engage with the warfighter in order to create a safer environment. And that's really the key with space-based hyperspectral sensors, is we have that capability to have a global reach and we can pick up chemical signatures and chemical change detection. Chemical signatures that are detected on our space assets can be processed autonomously on the spacecraft itself and instantaneously downlink to the end user. This will greatly reduce the time from detection to getting that useful information into the hands of the warfighter.